What's up, everybody? It's Joe LaPuma. You are listening. You are watching the Complex Sneakers podcast. As always, I'm with my guys. First off, to my right, Mr. Matt Welty. We're here after hours for after lunch. Late night shoot. Mm -hmm. To my left, Mr. Brendan Dunn. What's up? How you doing? I'm all right. It's been an interesting day. <laughs> it's been a rough, been a rough day. We're just smiling gonna, through it all. Been, yeah, smiling through yeah, it all. Laughing to keep from it's crying. Been a, it's been a rough day. Oof. It's been a rough behind day. the scenes stuff. Nothing that no anybody who listens to this, aside from people who yep. work at complex, I feel like your whole about. life's like crumbling like a cookie. Just crumbling. oh man, it's Monday it's night. Crumbling. It's Monday night. It's okay. been um, it's been a rough day for us, but we we work through. We roll with the punches, mm -hmm. and we're here. Evening shoot. Could have a late dinner, mm -hmm. and this is what we do. Mm -hmm. You guys, the fans, the listeners, will never hear about it. Maybe you will one day when, like, you're gonna write might, a tell. You're gonna write he a tends. memoir. He we're, tends. Yeah, we're gonna do the full size run tell, or we're gonna get like another uh, sponsored full size run offshoot show where we can just say whatever we want on camera. Oh, wow. And, and then one special thing off camera, and speaking about the people who work here, is and we, they would never know this unless we mention it. And it's important to mention it is that. Sometimes producer Dave Matthews is back in the building today. Super and, producer, Dave. Yeah, he's back. And, yeah, and maybe you can actually tell because he'll he'll talk a lot in the background. So mm -hmm. we'll be in the middle of a sentence and he'll just start talking off camera. So if you hear that on the mic, that's him trying to get his little bit of shine while yep. he's in here. You know, all in the videos. Exactly, uh, you know. and you probably won't hear him on the mic because anytime he's on the mic, we edit it right out. That's it. <laughs> like, he like, came off fresh off the fresh off the plane with the Sakai Nikes, a little bounce in his step. We're trying to restore the feeling in Brooklyn. He's staying in Brooklyn, undisclosed location. He's back in studio, back in the, the saddle. Best, the best is behind like, the cameras. there'll be a guest that mentions something, and he'll start talking about how like he saw J. Rue the damage and like, perform <laughs> yep. at like, yep. like, yep. like, the guest will be like, yeah, and I was walking by B.B. King's, and then like you'll hear just Dave Murray in the background again listeners you don't have to hear it but it that's oh. that's that's a small peek into the level of focus it takes to do this show because you know dave matthews is just back there going on yeah well, you guys won't have to hear him we unfortunately have to hear him all the time so <laughs> it's okay it's okay welcome back dave how how's it going how, how was the weekend weekend was good i went to the weekend concert oh the week the, so it's funny you say that. Funny yeah. story. I was the in. Artist. I was uh, in. Yes. I was like um, walking downtown Brooklyn to like Dumbo, and they have this kind of like this fair, almost like a mini flea market, right? Yeah. And they had like this vintage. I got a. I got a vintage Carhartt jacket. Okay. The person who sold it to me was like, "Hey, what's going on? How you doing?" I was like, "Good, good." He's like, "Um, nice to meet you, whatever." He's like, "Any plans for the weekend?" So mm -hmm. I was like, "Yeah, going to the weekend." He was like, "Oh." Yeah, it should be a good weekend. I was like, no, I'm going to see the weekend. Mm, he was like, first. oh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. He was like, oh, I'm going to the weekend too. I was like, oh, you're, so you're going to the concert this yeah. weekend, which is tonight. Oh, so Joe's yeah. like, I Joe's like, I know I'll never fix a sink myself, so I'll get a pre-broken in Carhartt jacket. <laughs> that, that was the takeaway from that anecdote okay. for him. Yeah, a little passive aggressive. Not even passive. Not even passive aggressive. Wow. Fully aggressive. Sorry, I'm not a super. Okay, not oh, all of us can yeah. be a super. <laughs> exactly. Not all stolen of us can be a yeah. You know what that is? It's stolen valor. You went and saw the weekend in New yes. Jersey. You said. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Saw a bunch of colleagues. Saw Al. Mm -hmm. Old colleagues. Saw. Do you consider him a colleague? No, old colleagues. Okay. I said. So, but even that. Yeah, colleague is like he's putting that guy on he's your a, level. He's a. Yeah, he's a colleague. Okay, Stefan, that's Eric Skelton, Weiss, okay. Weiss. Mm -hmm. uh, great show, though. I sent you me entering Jersey City. I sent the photo. Oh, yeah. You didn't you, comment. You were, you were out in Jersey City, and once again, Welty was nowhere to be found. He was fixing a sink. No. Um, well, I just want to say... I, no, I saw the... <laughs> yes, I, I saw the smile on his face. Yeah, what's, no, coming? No, 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 no. what's coming? Nothing weird. No, I saw the weekend in 20, 2017, mm -hmm. I yeah. think, in... Copenhagen. Ooh, Under what that's circumstances? A flex. It was a it that's was a flex. A outdoor festival. I had gotten invited to a press trip by Hummel of all brands, mm -hmm. and they brought us to this like outdoor festival in Copenhagen after the event, and we went and saw the weekend. You got in your feelings a little bit or no? Oh, maybe Ooh, a, little, <laughs> a little bit. A you little. know, it's like it's it's summer in Denmark, but it's like fifty eight degrees. Mm -hmm. All right, to that point, let's address it. I'll address it. Summer in Spain, Erling Holland episode of Sneaker Shopping is up. The weather was 80. I had a light ACG <laughs> jacket on. Okay, I know. All conditions. That's a condition. You were, you were in the condition. That's all I'm saying. I know it looks like I was had a lot of winter layers on. Yeah. The jacket is very light, okay? 
but I probably I, I'm not wearing shorts on camera. I, I think I only did that. <laughs> we, besides this, listen, I only we had the shorts that, conversation last week. You already know where no, I stand. No, but on I this. only did that for the Taiga closet. Taiga episode. made you bring the kneecaps out. I, I, I was wearing the Sakai waffles like Dave Matthews is, okay. but I'm not wearing shorts on camera. But yes, a lot of talk about <laughs> how me and Erling have two different attires on for two different climates. <laughs> the jacket was light. Let's get it out of the way. Go check that. There's a lot of talk about up. that. It's yeah. a big controversy. Ah. Listen, he doesn't re read the comments, Never. but I saw him in. The, he, you're reading my comments. I was reading the comments just to see how much they were gassing you up. And appreciate I love it. it. I love appreciate it. Appreciate it. Brendan Dunn, not a comment reader of your no, own of on, your own work. No, on YouTube, I will never. No, I've moved past that period okay. of my life. Actually, lately I'll go in on on the mm -hmm. FSR ones every once in a while, and okay. you know I see that they're pretty positive. So okay. whatever whatever the bad stuff is, I didn't scroll that far. So if you're if you're sitting here on this this video, cranking something out on your keyboard, about I do get more all the mistakes I'm making. I won't read it. <laughs> Not nervous because it's it's weird because so like the the full size run audience as a whole mm -hmm. I feel like is or the soul collector audience is a little more like familiar with our show yeah. and whatnot yeah but sometimes on complex it's like a mixed bag because you'll get like yeah. people from like who are fans of other shows who happen to stumble upon the podcast so they may leave brutally honest or degradating like comments and you're I'll like, never see them they didn't come for you. I mean, they, I'm sure they come for all of us, so it's like... No, I meant that they didn't come to the channel for you. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah <laughs> but they, they did they come for him. <laughs> they didn't come, yeah, but they, you know came, but they came for us. Yes. Um, I saw a couple colleagues this weekend. I was hanging out with our boy, Lei Takanashi. Uh, yep. I was Shout with, out. with Sarah game. Honda for Pen a little game, bit. game, always strong. Yes, sir. Sarah Honda. Sarah Honda brought the big dunks out. Wealthy, I know you're not a fan. Oh, you didn't not a fan I didn't even... You, I didn't know that that was the Sarah you were talking about. I sent you both a picture of somebody wearing big dunks. You just I said, said Sarah. I, I thought dunks, you guys are way dunk. more industry than I am, so I wasn't sure if it was someone I didn't know. Sarah. Oh, yeah. Sarah Honda. Okay. Always nice to see Sarah Honda downtown. Always. We were at a volleyball tournament, the Nine Aside, the, the mini tournament in Chinatown. Okay. Those people were playing hard. How's your volleyball skills, man? <laughs> you d you uh. You know what? I was never a volleyball person, as you can imagine. But when I was young, definitely at some point, my mom bought for us from Walmart a badminton set, okay. and we had a badminton set that we would put in the backyard at summertime. And I would go hard in the badminton. If y'all ever want to do a, a group outing, a badminton tournament, I will sign up immediately. Okay. I will be the number one seed. I might even say. We were we were tetherball. Guy. No tetherball. That? Tetherball yeah. makes me nervous on the playground. It's it's too much. It's too fast moving. Yeah, you know what you I mean. Know? You might yeah. take your you head off. Be like a yeah, you've had enough head trauma. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, there were like people who like yeah. were a little bit taller, you know, and could hit it a little harder, and they would just like go super high and just whack it. And then I you was couldn't. Never, yeah. You couldn't. It would just like spin before you even got like a chance to yeah. like touch it. it. It made me nervous. Were you a tetherball guy, Joe? Nah. I was a big tetherball fan. You were? Yeah, I like playing tetherball. Really? Yeah, of course. I can see you getting real aggressive. Right? <laughs> <laughs> real was... aggressive, I can see. All right, it's, just, was it's a... just recess in fifth grade. Okay. Tetherball was fun. Just trying to, yeah. <sighs> oh, another another outing I want to mention that I had this weekend was I went to the Formula E Grand Prix in Brooklyn. Okay. Uh, courtesy of our friend Sneakerbox Clyde and the good people at Puma. Okay. okay. Sneakerbox Clyde, legend. Of course. And who should be there in attendance... But John Geiger. Did you see him? No, but he saw me and he didn't even approach me. Listen, right. John, next time, just come say hi to your How'd boy. How'd you know? Because you saw I saw him post it on IG. Oh. And I was I mean, like, how, do you, how do you miss John Geiger? He's only like six foot five. I, he said he saw me, but he was like, you know what? I was just chilling. I'm, I'm sad I didn't get to catch up with John. All right. We, John, soon. John would be good in studio. Yeah, we I want to get studio. deep into the Nike talk, no message board. <laughs> well, yeah. We'll, we'll bring him back. Yeah, we'll get him back. And you know, it's me at a motorsport event, so I'm so I'm slowly climbing my way up. You know, Formula E, maybe we'll do some F2. You know, I'm, I'll be there. And today's guest may, today's guest may help be, me uh, you know, with my entry into. May help you get into the behind the wheel. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I did. A, I was behind the wheel for a little bit. I tried out one of the Sims, not the Sims, but one of the simulators. Simulars? Yeah, and so I was sitting back in the car and I had my feet up, actually like driving the thing, and it was. It was wow. a disaster. Looks... Were, you, were you a big Sims guy growing up? <laughs> no. Me either. No, my mom was skeptical of the Sims. Yeah? Yeah. You know, like Roller Coaster Tycoon and... <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Sims, Sim City, I was into, but all the... That, the Sims, no. Roller Coaster Tycoon, I never played. Um, I'm trying to think if any of, the, any of those other games... Okay, we could come back to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. The people, yeah. Let us know in the comments. I'll read those ones. Listen, I will. I do want to jump in. I know it's been. A, you're smiling. 
Why? No, no. But it's, <laughs> been a, it's been a rough day, but I do have a gift for you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So I haven't been, I haven't been, I do have a gift. Okay. He, yeah, he showed it to me earlier. I haven't been, my hit rate on pulling cards has been terrible, so yeah. I stopped pulling okay. cards. And then I was no like. No fetch lands, yeah, no shock nothing, lands. Nothing, no, not hitting anything, not hitting anything. And then I was like, oh, No let big me, foil commanders yeah, for like, EDH let me, deck. You know, let me just. Let me just try. He's tonight. looking over at your desk trying yeah, to. Don't look. Trying no, to the, way, the, like the, the way. kid. The kid trying to. The kid trying to find yeah, the Christmas. Yeah, Wait, hold on. Were you real quick? As an aside, were you guys when the Christmas gifts were in the oh, house? Yeah. Did you oh, try yeah. to? Oh yeah. Find did them? I tell you? Didn't I tell the story on no, here? No. Did you try? I think, to yeah, I think you said you opened them all one year or something. Yeah. One year we. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> one year we opened all the Christmas you presents. Really? Like the day before. On Black or Friday. Or maybe it was the morning of Christmas, and we just. I don't know what. I feel. I feel bad because I've told the story. I'm. I'm glad you confirmed that for me, Walty. But just. Some dark energy took over us, and we just totally let loose and ripped yeah, open every single present before yeah, my wow. birthday. Wow! So mind wait, or you weren't the type. Yeah, you weren't the type goblin to, mind, exactly. You weren't the type to be, be surprised. Want to be surprised? You no. Later on, me too. As my brain developed, yes, yeah. but we were like five years old at the time, and again, I would just the rules that morning. Didn't I think apply. as you get older, know. you want to be surprised. But yeah, in the beginning, I would I would be looking. Anyway, haven't hit haven't hit in a while uh -huh. on. Something good that you I didn't would find like. a Tarmogoy if you were looking for. Don't know what that is, <laughs> but I did hit on this. It's pretty cool. Yeah. But there's jo a thing where I'm like, you Joe's know what? Joe's concealing in his hand right now. I won't appreciate it as much as he will. Uh -huh. Okay. Slide the card over to Welty. Welty, what, what is oh, he? Oh, wow. Auto. What are you looking at? This is amazing. Wow. Thank you very, very much. Okay. This is actually. It's an auto, so. Yeah. yeah. Stan Smith. Autograph card. Wow! Thank, thank you very much. Yeah, put thank it right you. next to the Marcus Jordan um, frame at home. <laughs> Stan Smith. Wow. Yeah. And what Amazing. did you bring for me? Um, Jace the Mind Sculptor. I'll think of something. I, I think we've all you. we've all met Stan Smith in person, right? I haven't. Yes. Did I tell you that I thought I saw him at Wimbledon, and then I confirmed did. later that it was him. The air horn. I, <laughs> 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 no, but did I say it on here? Or did I say it elsewhere? No, you told As us. As I was walking told to us in the chat, yeah. I saw a, an older, taller white guy with Stan Smith on walking past in a in a blazer, and I was like, "Wait, it was, was just, that?" It was just wealthy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Was that Stan Smith?" And then I turned and I kind of he he d ducked into some hidden house, and I was like, "Was that?" And I kind of tried to halfway yell, but I was like, "No, who knows?" And then I looked and found a Getty image like a week later of Stan Smith at Wimbledon, and oh, it was, it was him. Same outfit. You missed Geiger and Stan Smith. Jesus Christ! Listen, Two yeah, so enjoy that. Wow, thank you very much. No, yeah, no problem. And, and if you want, you can sell it on eBay. You know it was my birthday a couple weeks ago. I know. Don't worry. I'll figure out something. It was America's birthday and Brendan's birthday. Tom Cruise's birthday. Sebastian Vettel also, same birthday. I think I said that. Should we give away some sneakers? Not someone's <laughs> birthday, but someone's getting a gift. Let's do it. It's not me, though, right? <laughs> no. Okay. But I'll get you one. Okay. No, no, no. Don't Actually, don't get me anything. No, when it no, comes no, no, up. No, 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 no. Don't, please don't get me anything. Don't worry. When it means something, I'll get it. <laughs> when you okay. least expect it. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's give someone uh, some sneakers. Okay. We don't have the sneakers here this week, but we are giving away the Hawaii Nike SB Dunk Low. A classic, I think. Yeah. Yeah, very good shoe. I think it's rare sometimes for a shoe with a, like a lot of patent leather or like mm. the kind of loud mm. to stand up the test of time. I think the Hawaii Dunks do. S subtle shoe because it's like has like, it's a black base shoe mm -hmm. and it has yeah. the hits of orange and, yeah, yeah. and red on it, but... And I always love, a, you know, we always bring them up like when Truist yeah. just will put a bulk of Hawaii dunks. So oh, the Shaka. Excuse me. Wow. <laughs> you were erupting like yeah, the ancient it, volcanoes we gotta, of Hawaii. We no, edit, we can't edit yeah, that out. Uh, That's how but, Hawaii was formed. The islands. It was a volcano in the water. <laughs> yeah. are Blowing we up just like your throat two. right now. <laughs> All right. So the winner this week, Michael mm -hmm. Mendina, mm -hmm. Centralville, Virginia. Okay. Centralville, VA. He asks... What are your favorite? Does Dave Matthews have any family there? No, thumbs okay. down. He just said. Okay. What are your favorite sneaker commercials and ad campaigns over the years? Hmm. Low Penny. That's a great one. Low Penny, and it goes in. If you haven't watched the James Whitner episode last week, did the Penny one social status Penny one? Also, the Penny commercials you could just go on YouTube and check, mm -hmm. but the oral history of Low Penny that. Written by written by your boy Adam Caporell on Complex. Make sure you go check that out. P put the link in the script. Maybe not, but no, no, no. <laughs> You're not gonna no, throw no. in that look. Wow. No, okay. the oral history of Lil Penny by Adam Caporell. Yes. Go read that. 
One of my favorite features, I had the Penny Hardaway poster in the uh, in my room. Did Rudy steal that one for you, or no, you, you paid good no. money for that? I don't think we, I wasn't around for any Penny signage at finish line. Okay. Yeah, low Penny oral history. That would be probably mine off first uh, first thought. Welty, do you have a, a pick? I think uh, some ones that stand out to me are, um, there was a Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, commercial for Foot Locker, mm -hmm. and this it was playing off of the whole his dad, Ken Griffey Sr., the, like their connection when he first came into the league, mm. and he's having a dream, and he walks into a Foot Locker, and uh, I think he's like going through all the shoes and whatnot, and his dad's like the Foot Locker salesman trying mm. to sell him all the sneakers, and then he wakes up and he's like having like a nightmare or whatever, and he's like, Dad, do you work at Foot Locker? Um, there's also a really good uh, John Goodman, one of the first, I think it's one of the first Foot Locker commercial ever. Okay. Where someone walks in and he's like, I need spot built sock and he oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. he's like, he's like, what size? Now, this is weird to me that neither of you mentioned the promo ad I did for Foot Locker around the <laughs> Nike Air Max 720 about yeah. three or four years ago. That, that, that didn't stick it out. It made it on mind. TV? Me and Jared Goff hawking the Air Max 720. Really? That's his name, right? The quarterback? Yeah. yeah. What position did you play? <laughs> sorry, wait. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh, no, we, we, I should say it like that. But what? No, you did. <laughs> you're entitled to ask the question. What? What was your role? I was. Is it a, on IMDb? Uh, you no, know, I don't know. I don't know if it's on there. Um, okay. I he's think a, I was like, a newscaster. Oh, that. That makes see that. sense. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, and I remember Jared Goff asking if my mustache was real. He kind of like tugged on it. Yeah, so Jared Goff, I, I immediately put you on a football field, but newscaster, yeah. I, yeah, was, I, I was thinking that he was going to reenact uh, Rick Moranis from the Little Giants. See, that's – that now he – that's – are you being disrespectful? <laughs> no. That's, I a don't, good, that's a good role. I don't – remind me. Rick Moranis. I know who Rick Moranis is. Thank okay, you very much. But remind me what he did in Little Giants. He was Giants. the coach. And he came up with annexation of Puerto Rico. That actually wasn't. That what? actually wasn't Rick Moranis. That was the the little. What is that? The name of a play? Yes. Yeah. No spoilers. If you haven't seen the movie Thirty, it's I'm, been about Thirty. I'm pretty sure. I 1994. Saw it. I, I mean, maybe we can spoil it. <laughs> was but it, that was it, a classic. Was it Rick Moranis? He got sucker punched recently, and people yes. are like, "New York is back, baby." <laughs> oh, no, no, that was sad. Look, it Little Giants: The Annexation of Puerto Rico. Yeah, it was a classic play. It was? Not even was Belichick could have drawn that one up. Speaking of, no little, but we got to go to a Giants game soon, Joe. You've We're promised going. me don't that. Worry. We're um, going. I don't know what my favorite sneaker ad is. I <laughs> just <give up>. Take <laughs> You know what? This is like, I remember Gary Warnett first talking about yeah. the David Lynch Adidas ad. Oh, yeah. I and I want to talk to David too. Lynch yeah. about that. It's a, it's a tubular ad, right? I believe so. It's like where he, it's like someone's running, running. through the, the wall. Yeah, and it's just yeah, there's really a, insane. A lot of fire and maybe like a scorpion superimposed on it or something like that. We'll talk to David Lynch about that one one day. Also, a bit, can we, get, can we give a bit of behind the scenes? Well, we'll yeah. see. Intel. One of the things I remember was the do not post this on the website. If it's about me, no. Nope. <laughs> if it's about me, it's not. No, true. no, no. It has nothing. It has nothing to do with okay. anyone here, anyone who works at Complex. I think I know. None of that stuff. The one thing that you could not post that was it's not a commercial, but sneaker yep. advertisement yep. related is. The Bo, Bo Jackson, Jackson yeah. Bo Nose photo. He's like, yeah. you will get sued oh. if you post this. Yeah. Earlier, earlier in the sneaker internet, people were a little looser about getting permission before they posted photos. And you might throw something up on your site, and three years later, somebody would say, I own the rights to this photo. I want to get paid for it. And that one was a notorious one where you got to stay away from it. For, former coworker, good friend of ours, B Fred, had the picture in his. Office. B. Fred's dad was a Nike employee. Yes. He has the little. OG. Yeah. Exeter, right? Exeter, yep. New Hampshire, baby. Yep. But he had the picture of the bow nose ad in his office. Right. Just it's, so he's does, just like. Does he have a bat? Is he holding the bat? It's the one where so. he's, he's like all, laced across no, his shoulders. Not that or one. It's oh. the one where he's dressed up, I believe, from all the sports. Okay. Where he's like a hockey player, tennis. Uh -huh. And he's like, Do you see this photo on my wall? Don't Dude, post yeah, it on the website. Don't touch. Shouts to B. Fred always. Yep. All right. One so of the listen. Most important Brendan's never work at Complex. Yep, Michael Medina. Again, we don't have them here, but you will have them there. Yeah. 
Hawaii Dunk SB. And that's from our good friends at eBay Sneakers. This is how the giveaway works each week. Let them we know. pick out a question. You can submit your questions at ebay.complex.com. If we pick your question and we read it out here on the air, we will send you a free pair of sneakers courtesy of eBay and their authenticity guarantee program. Only open to U.S. residents. All right. Should we bring on our guest? Yes. Excited about this one. Our guest on today's podcast has parlayed his passion for sourcing and selling rare cars into a full-fledged streetwear brand that's collaborated with Oakley, Vans, Carhartt, Dover Street Market, and more. Not only has he had a Porsche partnership, but there's a good chance some of the cars under the La Art de la Automobile umbrella have been featured in your favorite artist's music video. Through the Porsche collab, you may have seen some special makeup Air Force Ones, and through his friendship with the late Virgil Abloh, you may have seen him debut some sneakers that may or may not release, like the off-white bread Jordan 4s. Recently, he dropped a two-pack of Solomon ACS Pros that at least two-thirds of this podcast say are in contention for top 10 sneakers of 2022 so far. We're excited to welcome to the podcast, Arthur Carr. Arthur, thank you so much for taking the time. Thanks to you for having me. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, we're really excited. First off, right off the bat, we got to talk about what we're all wearing, and you... Wearing your shoe, the Solomon collab. What's it like to wear like your own shoe? So I've been wearing them since four days in the city. Yeah. And um, what it makes me feel like, it makes me happy to have a shoes that I can actually wear and feel comfortable with and have a little bit of style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you do shoes, most of the time you're happy to do shoes, but you can wear them once or twice a week. Mm -hmm. But these ones, you can literally wear them all day long, yeah. walk around, Different level drive. Of comfort. It's yeah. comfortable. You can drive with them because some of the shoes are not very comfortable to drive sometimes because depends on the car I have. The pedals are thin. Do you actually old. think about that? For yeah, shoes, I do. Like I do. Driving? I do. Yeah. Like when I wear my hookers, mm -hmm. I cannot drive my vintage cars easier because they're large, so they touch the brake and the gas at the same <laughs> time. Spin it out. It's too <laughs> wide. Yeah. It's too wide. So this, those ones, my collab or not, I had the sil uh, the gray ones before yeah, with the really red. Nice, yeah. And they're really nice, and I will wear them every day. Yeah. So, makes me more happy to wear mine now yep. with the colorways related to my logo. Right. So I'm, um, it's like it's, it's I'm proud. It's <laughs> and Solomon's in France too, right? Yeah. At the headquarters of the yeah. brand, so it makes yeah. sense. Nice. Uh, I'm doing SB Dunks today. I don't know how these do. Is this a good driving shoe? Could I drive? Yeah, 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 yeah. JPEG SB Dunks. No, you can you can drive. The best ones are the Air Forces. Mm. Air Forces are the best. Because you Air feel your one. feet and you can also feel the pedals. Oh, okay. He's getting more and more into driving. Slow yeah, but steady. Um, so my he has birthday to know. was a couple of weeks ago and we went to a go-kart track in Jersey City. And Which I, one I, you, you, you were wearing? Um, what was I wearing? Uh, New Balances. They're good too. Yeah. Right. I placed second. So I don't know. <laughs> it's because of the shoes. Maybe if I had the Solomons. <laughs> I'm going to go back with those it's on and see if I set a new lap first. time. <laughs> yeah, okay. Exactly. Well, guaranteed. See? Okay. I'm doing Black Cat. Jordan 4 is kind of like the summer signature. Yes, I know the inscriptions. Even Arthur, we saw each other before this. He asked who signed them. I wrote on them. These are <laughs> who like, signed them? Me, motherfucker. I these, signed them these, myself. These, yeah, these are like, you know, when it, when it's a work day, a long work day, and I'm just down to business, Black Cat 4s. That's yeah. what I'm on. Well, you Switched it up. Put a pair of Nikes on. Um, one of my favorite shoes, infrared 90s. I love this because... We don't see you in Nike too often, and no. we talked about it before, but people always forget that you are a guy who came up on Nike running shoes like yes, that. Yes, I love Air so Max. So th this is this is nostalgic to me to see this guy in a pair of infrared Air Max shoe. 90s. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. Thank you for doing that <laughs> for the people, Welty. I, I want to know more about the, the Solomon partnership. Like, how did those first come about? So I've been wearing Solomons because they're comfortable mm -hmm. and they have, they, have, they have some kind of style of depends the shoes they do that shoes that looks like kind of a mechanic yeah but they mm -hmm. were made for walking in the mountain and and my friends from the broken arm mm -hmm. they did for, the they did the first collaboration ever with solomon I believe. yeah for yeah. me they have the yeah. best collaborations with yeah. solomon every shoes they drop i have all of them yeah mm. but i wear them like daily and so i get to wear more and more solomon's also because of the broken arm mm. Because uh, literally, all these shoes they do, sneakers, mm -hmm. shoes, or even the slippers they did, I wear them in my house mm. So, or in vacation. So I get to, because to be honest, I wasn't a guy who grew up with Solomons. I grew up with Nikes mm -hmm. and yeah. Jordans. Yeah. That's the only thing I was inspired to wear because I play basketball. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I get to know the Solomons more. And in Paris, you see a lot of people wearing the Solomons. Interesting. And, um, right now or back then? No, no, since since Solomon started to be back in oh, the yeah, game. Yeah, 
So a lot of people, especially in fashion, we wear Salomons and uh, regular people who wear Salomons because they're comfortable. So you will see daily the shoes. And um, and I get to meet a guy who was working at Salomon called JP. Mm-hmm. Okay. And a very nice guy, very clever, very open-minded. JP LeBlanc? What is it? Exactly. You, what, yeah, I forget his ID exactly. handle. So JP and I, we talked many times. And one day he said, I would love to come to the garage. And, you know, every collaborations we do, most of 90% of them, people come to the garage. What you see in a picture and what you see in real is different. Mm. And you get to understand how the brand is coming from there because mm-hmm. it's a nice garage with a lot of cars, but it's more than that. When you arrive, you visit, you see that there is no difference between a $10,000 car and a whatever amount of car. All the team is working from there, uh, the brand and the car side. So JP realized that we have a story to tell together because of the shoes. So he showed me the first sample because this shoes was already in the game yeah. back then mm-hmm. with a different back. They had the air bubble kind exactly. of on the back. Yeah. The ACS Pro model. Yeah. Yeah. And in people in my hood, we wear Air Maxes mm-hmm. and we wear some, I forgot the name of the Adidas with the stripe on the side who looks like this. So these shoes remind me. Maybe Climacool? I don't have the name because I don't wear Adidas that yeah. much. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't know exactly. Mm-hmm. But I was like, that shoes remind me the people in my hood too. Mm. And... So I, I liked it, and JP was like, "You can do these ones. You can." And I, with Adrian, who is part of the one of the most important guy in the brand, who works with me, um, was like, "This is the shoes we should do." So we took these shoes and we start to play with, and we did a lot of different colors. But the first color we did was the pink and purple, because mm. mm-hmm. the pink and purple, I saw a motorcycle that I liked uh, in pink, purple, and black, and I was like, as take a picture on the red light of the motorcycle, that's back to 2020. Wow. Um, and uh, I sent it to Adrian, I said, let's try this color. So Adrian did the fragment, uh, how you say in English, the fragment? Yeah. Ca- of the, like CAD? No, the CAD, but yeah. on the colors, you see the- Gradient. The Gradient, gradient sorry. Yeah, yeah. The gradient, exactly like that, uh, related to the motorcycle. And then we went to ANSI where Salomon is based, mm-hmm. and we asked for two shoes. Because supposed to, I mean, we were already said we need two shoes, one for America and one for Europe. Mm-hmm. That's way before Corona. So we were there. And um, and the other color, I wanted to have the the, the colors of the logo. Sure. So, which is the Volkswagen Golf. Yep. The name, Lardo Automobile, and the garage, yellow, red, because the car is Red Mars. The name of the red is Red Mars. And, um, and the yellow. So that's the shoes related to the logo. And that one is related to the motorcycle that we liked. So it's, that's what. Sorry. No, no, it's funny because I think you're a bigger fan of the, the pink, the pink one, and I'm a bigger fan of, that one. So we like we were discussing it, but I'm like I, I think that's the one, and you said no, I think the 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 pink one's the one. But the good thing is, I got both. Oh, that's, <laughs> right. no? that's, that's what's most important. I've been wearing, I've been wearing the, but but yeah, I've been wearing the um the, pink and black a lot. Yeah. But. Yeah, I always used to think like, oh, color blocking. That's it was such like a term I felt like when you were originally unboxing mm-hmm. things like color blocking, color blocking. But then when color blocking like is intricate and it works, I think it's like it's a slam dunk. So yeah, the black and pink. I was I actually hit on Solomon.com like on a the manual web, release on the website. Listen, Joe Lapuma is at the level where he's not he's not gearing up to go stand in line. Or no. He's not he's not on the website right when it drops. So the fact that you got Joe Lapuma on a manual release for your sneakers like that that's an achievement in my opinion. And then and then this colorway was growing on me. You love this. And also the you, th- the thing too was is that and I think we spoke about this. No one could figure out how the shoes were releasing. It was just like there was like no like real like release date out there. And like you were trying to talk to people and find it out. And I'm trying to find it out. And like we couldn't find out a release date for the shoes. They were just like. But he kept them very limited. That's what I do. Yeah. I don't. What I'm trying to do with my brand, not about the shoes. It's you remember when we were younger, mm-hmm. you will go in some store. We were talking about it this morning. You will yeah. go in some stores and you will see the product. You actually like it. You will be able to get it. Yeah. yeah. I don't like. I'm not excited about sold out. I don't like to be sold out. Mm. I want my product to be available. I don't want to produce too much either, but I want to have people who doesn't know about us feel f- related or connected or find it. In st- I went to Dover Street just now when I saw my product available. Still there? Not the, the shoes. Sh- okay, I was going to say. Unfortunately, I would be happy to see my shoes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And 
You know, we did the numbers of these shoes in 2020. In terms of the, the amount allotment, of shoes yeah. making. The allotment. And exactly. The company grew up between. Oh, yeah. oh, oh in the past two years, so you had no idea. That's that interesting. That I would be able to sell triple or four times more than what we did. How many pairs? I don't want to say. Yeah. <laughs> Thousands? Kind of, yeah. Yeah. And That's uh, interesting. So 2020, maybe the allotment, we'll see how big, and now the brand is has a lot of steam. Yeah. It could have moved a lot more. Because 2020, we released Vans, yeah. the first Vans with the Alcantara fabric. Mm -hmm. We did well, but I'm, one more time, we I want to go slowly, and I don't know what I'm capable, and I don't want to overproduce and and just have something that my partner is going to be like this didn't do well for us because I want I, I'm okay to have my shoes sitting for two years because mm. it will I will get new customers yeah. yeah but the market doesn't work like this anymore right. so I was like let's do a, a, a not a low number but let's do a number which is actually bigger than us. And also, also, when I put the number of these shoes, these shoes never came out. So I even didn't know if the people going to love this shape, which I love. Yeah. So I was like, let's take a risk, but not too much either. So we put a good, actually, it's a good number because mm -hmm. I see a lot of people wearing it. Even in New York, I was like kind of surprised of people wearing it and also recognizing the shoes without knowing who I am. Mm. But I feel like there was a lot of, there was a lot of buzz around that silhouette when it first came out because i had gotten the all gray pair mm -hmm. and i didn't know because i had like the solomon's before like the xt6 or whatever mm -hmm. and those were the ones that everyone wanted and i wasn't sure like how people were going to react to the the all gray acs and then when i posted it everyone's just i want these shoes i want these shoes when are they going to release 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 so it was just like it was almost like a little surprise in the market so it's really interesting though two years ago was it always set, like was it set to release earlier and Corona kind of delayed them or you had this yeah. in mind? No, this is like they'll release in two years or like this was supposed to be maybe a 2020, 2021 release. No, no, it's supposed to be a 21 release. OK. And mm -hmm. also I'm happy it happened because a lot of other things happened between. Mm -hmm. But um, I, when we did the numbers um, and when we decide the way we decide to promote our stuff, well, of course, we give a date, but. We want the people to know this is gonna come out, and and I rather don't post anything before it's out. Right. I was so scared about the leak. I was so scared because the vents for the January twenty two mm -hmm. vents leaked, mm -hmm. the yellow ones. So I was like, I don't want that to happen for the settlement because we spent so much time with my team to do the videos. The, sure. We paint the bike. We paint a, a racing mm -hmm. Porsche rated to the shoes. We did so many stuff that I was like, I'm gonna leak it myself. But if I have to choose, there is no leaks. I just put it online. It's like, this is out. Yeah. And this is what Same I want day. to do. Yeah. Going from consumer, because we know that you buy, we'll get to like you buying shoes and what you're into. Going from consumer to like designer, you know, we see leaks and we get all excited. When you're on the other side, is it really, really annoying to like not have a shoe leak? No, I like the shoe. I, I don't want the shoe to leak. Mm -hmm. So your question is like, if it's annoying, if the shoe leaks, right? Do you get like this paranoia, like it can't leak, it can't leak? Yeah, and then yeah. Just as a normal consumer, like, oh, these went online, everyone's excited to like see no, the first I image. I'd rather to nobody see it yeah. and bring the surprise mm -hmm. ourselves with our communication because the leak thing I totally understand. Mm -hmm. Of course, when I want to shoes and I see it, I'm like, oh, that's good. I want yeah. to buy it. Yeah. Uh, it pays it, our bills. We got we to gotta write about something, man. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, I don't want my product to leak because it's about the respect of the process that what we did. Mm -hmm. My team worked hard with me to have this happen the right way. And then you have somebody who doesn't know you, even doesn't know your brand mm -hmm. because my brand is still small. Yeah. And they just post the picture and you're like... No context, no story. Like just for... They I just would never know, do they it. They just know because it's Solomon that it's going to be popular or whatever now. Yeah. So they're just kind of putting you it You don't up. know who is going to have it in there. It can be the, the delivery guy. It can be the guy who work at the shop. It can, Did well, you, you try to know. figure it out? No, but it didn't leak. I leaked it myself. Okay, but okay. The vents, I tried to figure it out. But the <laughs> you vents, did an investigation? Kind of, but the <laughs> vents leaked in China. Okay. And okay. it was a store. And a guy had a picture because they knew they're going to have these shoes in a few weeks. Yeah. So they, he posted and he said, this is going to come out in January. And the guy doesn't even doesn't know us, so, but it's okay. Were you losing your mind or you? No, but I'm just sad because yeah. we mm. really have a story to tell before for the shoes to come out. We, mm. we work on this. So it's, you know, when I have the chance to see a lot of things was going to come out later this year and ha my entire career between sneakers and as a respect to my friends, mm -hmm. I don't post. 
Yeah. You know, I just, I even don't take pictures. Of course. If I take pictures, it's because it's a very close friend who trusts me and I, it's no question mark. But between um, people I don't know, I just watch and I'm happy to see it, yeah. but mm -hmm. I keep it for me. I even don't talk about it. So it's a respect of work. Yeah. This is how I see it. The one shoe you did have was the off-white bread Jordan 4s. Yeah. And that I was like- I posted for a long time. But, yeah. But that was and like a big deal. And then the comments, deal. I hit you because they're like, these are unreal. And we were looking at it. It's like, if anyone's going to have them, you're going to have them. Obviously, your close friendship with Virgil, rest in peace. But yeah, the bread Jordan 4s. But I was happy of people believing it's a fake one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't care. I wear it. I, mm -hmm. I post it because who knows knows, who doesn't know. I'm yes. Totally fine. It's like when people ask me if it's my car, I, I rather say it's not my car. Mm. I don't do that for the people. I do that for me. Yeah. So when they think it's fake or I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. It's totally nice for even people see me walking with it in the street. You just wear those regularly? Yeah. 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 And they, some people who, I remember being in Disneyland uh, with Bridget's wife. Mm -hmm. And okay. she had it on her feet because she also wear them. And I was not having them. Mm -hmm. And two guys... One of them was wearing Jordan 1 Chicago, mm -hmm. and another one was having an off-white T-shirt. But they looked like they didn't know exactly everything. Right. And they were watching her and telling to themselves how fake their shoes are. Oh, and wow. I was watching wow. them. But knowing the disrespect, well, well, like sneaker addict, you know, we all yes. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you want to know. Me, me too. When I was young, I would see sneakers and I would be like, is this real? Mm -hmm. and so they got, these guys were like that. And they were like, nah, it's not possible. They didn't know who was who. Did you right. tell them? The, or no, no, you no. Because no. you're, you're like a very kind of like, I mean, your brand is growing and big, but you personally are kind of like a private person like on social media. You know, like yeah. your Instagram account, you don't have like a lot of followers or yeah. you're just like kind of private. Part, yeah. So when they see you, they don't instantly recognize like, oh, that's a celebrity wearing the shoes. Of course, they're real, you know? That's exactly what I want. I, want, I and don't I want even think, to know. You didn't even get in the comments to correct anyone, but I remember being like, this, these are legit 100%. He's wearing them. He's the one to debut them. Did anybody try and buy them off you? No. no. No, people don't talk to me. A lot of people don't know why I'm, which that's what I like. I, mm -hmm. I want the product to be known because of the good product. I don't want the product to be known because of somebody famous yeah. or or push somehow or me. It's I'm working hard to have what I have in my mind coming out and exp uh, express my experience with cars and all the products that we love. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing it for for an expression, not to make myself bigger or mm -hmm. somebody else. Yeah. It's, I'm fine of people just don't don't even talk to me. But if they say it's nice, I'm I will be very uh, happy to hear too. Yeah. So when I see that situation, it makes me makes me kind of happy because yeah. I'm like, they don't know, they got to learn yeah. it. Perfect, they will perfect, if yeah. They wanna, they yeah. Wanna, and those know. are like, sample, are those samples? Um, they shoes which Virgil had on the side. Mm -hmm. He wanted to give to all his best friends. Okay. And and I got the chance to have them, so, but they were never released apparently. So. Yeah. Is it something you keep like special, like I only wear these once and I'm gonna like put them away in a box or you just like wear them all the time? I wear everything. Mm. There is no shoes that I don't wear. The only one I never wear is because I don't want to look crazy. It's the Air Mag. You have them? Yeah. Both That's them? the only one Both that of I them? wear. No, I have the first edition. Mm -hmm. I didn't want it. The second one, I didn't fight for that. But that's the only shoes that I, I would never wear because you, you kind of look like going to the space. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. Then, but I'm happy to have them. Yeah. <laughs> Do you and, have uh, the uh, the Friends and Family Louis Vuitton Air Force ones? Yeah. Which color? I wear them green. Yeah. I Did wear you get them to like, pick or I they make just them... showed up? Uh, no, Nike sent it to me. And yeah in green because they know I love green so sure. but I wear them I, I want them dirty and beat up so mm. I wear them I have another friend Luca Luca Saba has the orange yeah. ones mm -hmm. yeah they be they're like very dirty and it looks better this is an interesting point because I think I remember not to talk about you know Virgil too much but I remember an IG story maybe that he posted where he tagged you and he said we're out here battling purists in our dirty white Air Force mm. Ones. Like you and him yeah. maybe had this idea together that it was better for the Air Force One to be beat up and mm -hmm. to look a little musty, which is this big debate, I think, in sneakers right now of, of whether or not it should be crispy and clean or whether or not it should look fucked up. It's, uh, you know, it depends who you are. Mm -hmm. It's, uh, uh, everything is rated to your personality for mm -hmm. me. Dr. Dre and Jay-Z have fresh pairs of Air Force Ones. We never see any dirty yeah no crease not nothing, a speck on them. exactly and that's the inspiration one of the inspiration of why i love white air. one of my favorite air force ones is the rockefeller because of the leather mm -hmm. the leather of the shoes 
the logo is there, but if that shoes uh, exist without the logo, I will wear it every day. Mm. Even with the logo, I wear it every day, no matter what, but mine's a bit, bit up and I every time constantly buy a new pair online. Um, we, Virgil didn't like the clean cars. His cars were always dirty. Okay. I like clean and dirty cars. Mm -hmm. So depends my mood. Mm -hmm. I have many white Air Forces, simple, good leather, regular, um, and they all kind of dirty. Mm -hmm. And but I like them when they're new. You know, it's depends my mood. But also, sure. no one would expect you like your whole you know life like being around cars and working in a garage and everything for your sneakers to be pristine twenty four seven. You know, it yeah. just doesn't go with your lifestyle. Exactly. It's funny because when I was a mechanic. So the reason why I'm on cars is not because I'm in love for cars. Yeah. I didn't have the choice. I love cars, but I didn't have the choice to work very young and start as a mechanic, start as a mechanic. But sneakers, art, music were already in my mind, deep, 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 mm -hmm. and basketball. So I would go to work with my Jordans. I will try to work with my Nikes or whatever what I had in my feet. Even I was wearing Vans also. That's one of the reasons why I work with Vans because they were related to my past. But... I will have them dirty. It will make me upset when my Jordan 6 get dirty. Mm -hmm. mm. But um, it's a story, you know? They're part of your life. So um, I see shoes like cars. They're here for a reason, and it's a transportation. Mm -hmm. So transportation, you cannot guarantee that stays clean nonstop. And also, I think you look kind of... It's not nice to just try to have your shoes clean all the time. I think... Things that needs to have a life, mm. yeah. And of course, you don't gonna make them dirty like a mechanic. But <laughs> if they have something that no other shoes will have, like I like crash cars. Okay. Because for me, every cars will get a crash. It's a one-off. You're you about to give crash. me flashbacks here. I was at a car crash a couple months ago, but keep going, Arthur. Right <laughs> <laughs> like literally, when you crash, whatever you check, beautiful car crashes. <laughs> no, I'm not you gonna check look. Online. No. What, is that, what is that like? <laughs> But what, you were, you were what, making like clothes, right? With like crashed like yeah. uh, Porsches and whatnot. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, I, I, I got a it. photo of a crashed Nissan Xterra. If you want to set that yeah, up, we can do a little collab. Show me. <laughs> <laughs> you can crash two time at the same time, two cars at the same time. They will not look the same. And because for me, I see that as a piece of art. But yeah. it's, it's the same with the shoes. When your shoes have, I have some memories on my Jordan uh, Four, brand new white. Mm -hmm. Somebody walk in it, and I couldn't say anything because that person was like. Impressive, and I Can was like, "Can you say who the person was?" But my, no, no, but it's just just a man that I don't <laughs> sure, know. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, but he was looking at me like being sorry, and I was looking at him with my eyes. I wanted to like destroy the guy, but I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but I will always remember that step on the brand new shoes that yeah. I just wore ten minutes ago. Yeah, but he reminds me to to the movie, do the right thing too, mm -hmm. and of the commercials yep. and all this stuff. So yep. it's I see the positive on that. Of yeah. course, it's annoying, but I try to see the positive. A shoe that definitely is to be lived in and worn mars yard yeah one of your favorites would you say and and you have like an interesting story about those so the first i mean even the second one but yeah. the first one for me are the best nike collab ever ever the 1.0 the, the yeah with the box yeah the way they presented what happened to the shoes because nobody wanted it right it was only people who knew about about them people they didn't heard, care at all yeah they hurt your feet, but the airbag fabric is there, the NASA, the backpack, the jacket, all the stuff. This mm -hmm. is, for me, one of the best Nike collab ever. Mm -hmm. Totally. And uh, I bought a lot of pairs because they were sleeping for weeks. And I bought pairs for my very close friends back then. And I would offer them because I would look at them as an art piece. Mm -hmm. you, you cannot offer art piece to your friends, but that was actually an art piece that I can offer to some friends. So I was very into it and I wore them. And more I will wear them, more they will look great. Yeah. yeah. Was the upper getting frayed like they do? Everything. Yeah. Everything like dirty walls and the the in the front will get the little peak, you know, yeah, on yeah, the yeah. toe. And I liked it. The shoes looks different <laughs> after. But you bought a bunch of pairs for a bunch of friends. Yeah. And, and they were where were they? Just sitting on Colette or, or where? Yeah, I, I bought everything in Colette. Okay. <laughs> everything. They, every pair. Every, no, not all the pair they had, because yeah. a lot of in Paris there is a lot of people connected, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a lot of people on sneaker games, sure. and, and I learned a lot from them, like Opium store in Paris, mm -hmm. like yeah, one of the OGs. Yes, because Opium. of Opium, I know a lot. But it was a lot of people like us went going there and buying them, but they were expensive for for shoe. Yeah, they were like the retail was like three fifty USD. Then. Yeah, so the shoes were slipping because of that, but 
two, three, I think three weeks or one month later, they will be, they were gone. Yeah. And, but I was going daily to Colette because my office was just in front of Colette. Oh, wow. So I would just step in, eat something downstairs and I would see, you still have an eight and a half? Yeah. <laughs> Give me one. Yeah. <laughs> so. We had a, a, a story told on this podcast once we had, I don't know if you know Croatian style. He's like a sneaker, he owned Project Blitz. He had said when he went to Paris for the Paris dunk release at the time that they were like, he had uh, explained it as a bunch of like hipster Parisian kids who didn't know what the Paris dunks were and they were wearing them and just tying them and throwing them on the yep. on the telephone poles and like That's they, true. Were, they were just sitting in the streets. Do you remember that shoe coming out in Paris yeah. or? So I know Andre well. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's, I have a lot of respect for him and his knowledge of sneakers. Yeah. I met him through eBay. Wow. Back then, oh, wow. I was about to buy him a sneaker, and we mm. a very good one, and we never did the deal, but we stayed friends. That's the power of eBay. Huh? The power of eBay. Yeah. Wait, We're did you get Wu Tang dunks so. from him or something? No, I unfortunately don't have that shoe. Did you take a picture? I take a picture of his shoes. <laughs> I remember. I remember. <laughs> good <a> picture, <laughs> I remember a picture of you with the Wu Tang, like in Project Blitz. So, but Sorry. I wanted to buy that shoes, and he was like, "You know him? He's very specific, and I understand because <laughs> yeah. I'm like that with cars." Yeah. He's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna sell it," and the next day he's like, "Nah, I don't want to sell it." Yeah. <laughs> and I don't. I don't. When I do that, I don't like to somebody push me, so sure. I didn't push him. But I wanted to buy that Wu Tang. Okay. And, um, but I will have one day one, but, um, he, I took a picture cause I was like, cause yeah. the, one of the reason why I'm doing this is also because of the Wu Tang. Sure. Mm -hmm. So having the shoes in my hand, I was like feeling like I'm touching old dirty bastard. Mm -hmm. You know, I was like, Oh, I'm with him now. Mm. So, um, but Paris dunks, I'm sorry. Yeah. So Paris dunks, it's funny. The story it's, I wanted to have the pigeons. Okay. The staples. Yep. Yeah. Like yep. I was like. That's the shoes. Mm -hmm. And I bought three pairs. Oh, the of the pigeons? Yeah. Wow. So I bought three pairs, two on my size, and one on my best friend's side. Did you buy three. them on eBay at the time? Yeah. Yeah. So I bought one with the laser and the number on the si inside, yeah. which I never wear on my size. And I have the the paper journal, how you say, the the print, the press print of the yeah, day yeah, yeah. with the release and the cops and everything. Yeah. yeah. It was New York Post, maybe. Yeah, New York Post. Yeah. Um, and I bought another one, which I wear. And I bought a third one for my bestie, and it was one of the of the 30th two on his size, mm. the laser one. Do you have the so, Paris dunks? Ah, uh, where are mine? Yeah. My pigeons, I wear them. No, the Paris dunk. I know I don't have the Paris dunk. So yeah, when the Paris dunk come out, I was not focused on the Paris dunk mm. because the pigeon were official. Got it. Got it. The pigeon were really made with Jeff Staples. So right. for me, it was a real Nike collaboration. The Paris ones, the family never agreed about it. So it didn't so feel as special. For me, I was like, it's good, but it's not. I was not fighting for it. Of course, the value is crazy, yeah. but that doesn't excite me. I don't, yeah. I, and I will not see my. They're very beautiful. But do you yeah. regret it, though? No. Because <laughs> I don't sell my shoes, so I don't regret it. So for me, they were still worth $100. Got so um, when the shoes come out, I find them beautiful, but I, I, could, I couldn't see myself wearing those. Mm -hmm. But I wear the Heinekens, I wear the Pigeons, I wear the Tiffany's. Even if the Tiffany's wasn't real, I, I was like, that one, I'm going to wear it. And I have two of them, and they both beat up. Mm -hmm. So um, I was more focused on the pigeons. So I didn't have enough money. I didn't have enough money back then to buy the Paris, the Tiffany. Sure. The, so I was like, my money going to go to the to the Jeff Staples ones. Yeah. Can you take it even further back than that? Like, I want to know as a kid growing up either in France or in Beirut, what the sneakers were, what the important models to you were, and like where you were buying them. So in Beirut, I, I leave Beirut when I was nine years old, okay, closer to 10. But soon I arrive in France. Were there, was there any sneakers available in Beirut? Was there cool stuff? Were there cool After, stores? After, yes. Yeah. I, I got my Barclays from Beirut. You ever go to spot Mike Sport? You ever heard of that? Um, I think maybe my parents would bring me there. I don't remember about yeah. Mike Sport, but I remember stores in Paris. Mm. Um, I was like, when I arrived in Paris, I was in a, in, in, in a school in Paris 20th, mm -hmm. and I was already starting to play basketball because of one of my cool friends were play basketball, and I was like, I want to play with you. We became friends because of it. And he had a pair of Jordan. And for me, Jordan was only on the TV. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I could have a pair of Jordan. Mm -hmm. You could be like him. Like him. And I was like, where did you get those? And my big brother has those if I stole them, whatever. And I was like, I want a pair of Jordan. So everything started there. 
I went to see my mom and I said, mom, I want a pair of Jordan. Mom was like, what is Jordan? Mm. And back then you couldn't get the Jordan in some stores like Foot Lickers or some little retailers or in a book that you can choose your clothes and you, you will send a check and they will deliver you later. Okay. So I, I had the book and I was like crossing it. Like mm -hmm. this is the one and there was a Jordan jacket too and a lot of stuff. So mom was like, we can't, yeah. sorry. So for my birthday, they offered me the first Jordan I ever had was the Jordan 8 Aqua. Mm -hmm. His the favorite. Original. Yeah. The original. Yeah. Yeah. That's the first, but I wanted to have the six. Okay. okay. And seven. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I saw the seven with the Olympics number nine in the back, I lost my mind. Crazy. But my parents couldn't afford it. Yeah. So I would watch the people and I would be like, mm. like, just the nine in the back would make me lose my mind. Mm because of the story yeah so and also the Dor the robinson shoes came out mm -hmm. and i was like hi i have the jordan i cannot have those yeah <laughs> so i will lose so all these things create something in me which i was like i did i, I didn't say to myself later i will have these shoes because i i was thinking day to day back then sure mm -hmm. but it created something on me that i wanted to play basketball very well and i wanted to w play with these shoes so i will do everything i can to be good at school. I was bad, but be good at school. <laughs> <laughs> to have my parents put money on the side to offer me that at, during Christmas or my birthday. Mm. And, uh, and things were built like this, little bit by little bit. And I don't know why. I mean, I know why, because I was playing basketball. Then we moved outside of Paris in the suburb. And my only focus was playing basketball. So I would play basketball with taller and older guys than me. Mm -hmm. And they would all wear crazy Nikes. And so I would learn from them. And I will learn from these people like, okay, I want to be like you. Mm -hmm. and they will show me which ones, the Barclays and this. And I, will, I was like getting inspired by my friends. So this is how I built my relationship with sneakers. One thing that I noticed about you is that you also wear non-hyped Jordans, yeah. like uh, the quilted 14s. Yeah. Not over hyped or anything like that, not even reselling for that much. But what about like finding shoes that maybe aren't as hyped models and, and like putting them on? Many reasons. First, first of the reason why I love this type of shoes is because in my mind, they remind me some type of moment. Mm -hmm. And also uh, the shape. That one has a logo like the Ferrari logo. Yeah. Right, on the side. Mm -hmm. So yeah. when I was a mechanic at Porsche, I would go to Ferrari at night to check their cars to learn more about Ferrari. I didn't want it to have a Ferrari, but I would just go by curiosity. So all these things are in my mind and related to my story of the Jordans. Mm -hmm. It's not only playing basketball. Jo I wanted to have some Jordan sneakers for the colors because I knew Jordan were driving Porsches, Ferraris, yeah. and all these Corv Corvettes. Because mm -hmm. I, I would buy the magazine every week and I would also collect the cards. And you would have all this info. You will see Jordan in cars. You yeah. know, we didn't have satellite in my sure. house. Right. We would record in friend's house and I will have a cassette that I will look the next day. And you would not see Dennis Rodman in the Harley Davidson or mm -hmm. Jordan in the Porsche, but you would have magazines and you would see some pictures. Yeah. yeah. So that's why I wanted to have all these shoes or the 14 because all this moment in my brain, not for the only because of the Ferrari, also because of my feelings, my motivation, uh, the way that I was playing basketball thinking in my mind that I'm Jordan. Yeah. How good were like you? Like literally. What was what, what was, your what was the stat line? Yeah. Uh, in French, we say, do you know the one who brings the ball? Uh, point guard. Yeah, point guard. So I was like, in my mind, I'm him. Yeah. I never dunked in my life. <laughs> 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 I never, never dunked. But I was just like, that. that's what it is. So it's all these reasons. And also, when I see your shoes, like we were talking about the Jordan 4 Metallic the with metallic, the good yeah. leather this morning. Mm -hmm. Yes. You go in Paris, you see everybody with the Dunks today and these sneakers, the mm. Jordan 4 Metallics. Mm. Every color, the purple or the green, green or the, the orange, oh, yeah. or the, especially the red. But these shoes are, are really great. Yeah, Like when you wear them, the feeling of the leather and the finishing of the shoes and the little detail of the Metallic, yeah. these shoes are made for me. So I have all of them, of course, but I stopped wearing them because of that. So my mind, I want to go differently. So what, which one I have in my collection that nobody is wearing today and also I like to wear? This is where I go. Yeah. Did you get any of those um, Colette Jordan ones? Yeah, I have only one. Because I saw there there was this week where Fat Joe had posted like the all blue pair that said Merci on the side. Uh, yeah, I didn't see that. Oh. I, I didn't know if you had. No, I have the one of, of the Sarah gave me 
um, one of the, the white and blue. Yeah. What would you say walking around the city right now is like the biggest difference in like what people are wearing on their feet from Paris right now and New York City? Uh, is it similar when it comes to like sneaker culture? Kind of similar. You see everybody, I mean, you see, this is not people who are connected. This mm -hmm. is people who wants to look cool. Mm -hmm. They all wear the dunks today. Yeah, as sure. you can see, everybody yeah. has the dunks, yeah. pink, blue. The dunk, the dunk means something to us, but today is just another pair of, or like the white Air Force. Yeah. Every girls, everybody wear the white Air Force. Mm -hmm. And we're, I would talk about it yesterday with some friends. I wear the white Air Force for a reason. Yeah. But this is me. And today, mm -hmm. th that's the beautiful of the, today's world. Yeah. These kids doesn't know what the white Air Force means. Mm -hmm. And they're wearing them and they're making them dirty, mm -hmm. which is fine. And yeah. it's nice to see. So it's kind of the same. Kind yeah. of the same. Like literally, I don't see big difference. I see a lot of people with Salomons in New York. Yeah. A lot of yeah, people. And Hocus sure. too, right? And Hocus too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people. Do you, I mean, obviously being in uh, Paris, you mentioned Opium before. Opium 180 is like one of the favorite Classic. shoes that like I've never got to own. And it's like a shoe at this point that you can't really buy it because if you wear it, it's just going to crumble and fall apart. Do you have like memories of that shoe coming out at first or no? So when that shoe came out, I didn't have the chance to have them. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted them. And uh, Yassine Farid and Mounir, the owner of Opium, they, they, they're my friends. I don't see them this often these days, but I would see them kind of like once every two days back then. And one day they offered me a pair, the friends and family with the special box. Mm -hmm. One of my, I was very happy and very proud to be their friends that day. <laughs> um, because I was like, these guys, they mean a lot to me because these guys, they know sneakers. Right. They really know. They deeply know so getting a sneakers from these guys i was like it's, it's important for us and especially in paris they were the ones so when that shoes come out i really wanted them but i didn't have them plus they have that special kind of fabric leather mm -hmm. it's very nice and and i'm the 180 means a lot to me because when i saw the 180 the first time in my life i was shocked because the air were touching the floor yeah yeah that bag was different yeah. And the air was bigger than what Nike can produce now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like way bigger. So yeah. you will be impressed. I was like... Do you remember where you were exactly? I was in Paris. Yeah. I was in Paris near my uh, where I was living. And uh, I remember two things which shocked my, my, my... I mean, many more, but related to the Air Max. The first time I saw the Air Max, the, the Rommel Air Max ST, mm -hmm. in blue, I was like, what? What yeah. is this? Yeah. And uh, when I saw the 180 with the big air, mm -hmm. I I wanted that shoes. So because of that reason, I also wanted that shoes. And I'm, I'm very happy that I have them. When you did the Porsche collab, you did a green Air Force One? Yeah. What was that? How did that come about? So one more time, my favorite sneaker. Air Force. The Air Force One. Mm -hmm. And um, I... I was wearing, I don't wear this much today because you can keep seeing Air Force Ones everywhere. Mm -hmm. So I put that on the side a little bit. But I was wearing, during, when I did the Porsche, I was wearing Air Force Ones every day. Mm -hmm. And I was at the painter's pl uh, place where the, the guy who paint my Porsche is a, he's an artist. So he was painting the car some type of way, which if you know that job, you look at it, you, you're learning something. And I, I was like, I got the idea, I had my Air Force on my feet, and I was like, can you paint at the same time my shoes? So I gave him my shoes that are on mm -hmm. my feet. White on whites. Yeah, white on whites. Yeah. So he painted, and he came out exactly like the car. So I didn't tell him back then, because I wasn't. He, I wanted him to be focused on my car. Mm -hmm. But the next day, I said to Adrian, yo, how many pair of white Air Force we have in the storage? He goes like, oh, I think we have 10. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, let's get 20 more, 30 more and paint all of them <laughs> and it was like this metallic shine right is the is the paint of the car so while he was painting the car because he painted the car the body of the car without the doors so while he was painting the car the next day he painted the door so I, we bring him many pairs that as we had and we told him at the same time paint this and he was like in a good mood so he did it mm. so if you see the shoes is literally put next to the car is the same Interesting. but if you wear them they get cracked so okay. i don't wear them I mean, well, I wear them, but... Did after. you guys sell them? No, no, not no. at all. We don't no. sell. But I have the shoes uh, in my house and in the, in the storage. It's just a moment. I did that for the moment. I did that to show also it's possible. Because yeah. I like break. 
I like breaking rules. I like to show to the car car people and the fashion or sneaker, sneaker culture that people, there yeah. is there is more than what we already know. Mm -hmm. So it's a for me doing that was first for myself and have a like the Porsche 911 or even the 968. It's a it's a piece of art and timeless car. Yeah. The Air Force is a that shows uh, I'm sure our kids kids of our kids will still have it. Yeah. So I did that for that reason. And no matter what people can say, shoes are related to cars. Mm -hmm. It's a different type of tra transportation, but they both on the floor. They both bring you somewhere and protect your feet as yeah. much as a car protect your body. Car is made to bring you somewhere and protect you because before we were in a horse. So sure. yeah. like Nike probably forgot that. Like when I see Nike with Michael Schumacher shoes, on their feet, I'm like, why this is not possible to buy right now? <laughs> Yo, well, he always brings up the Michael Schumacher shoes. Like, why don't he we bring these back? He brings them up a lot. But yeah. It's so, it was so cool. I just remember, like, being a kid growing up, my dad was really into, you know, like, racing and whatnot. And I, like, remember seeing, like, the Nike shoes, and it was just, like, cool that an F1 driver had it. And it's funny because there's so much interest in F1 nowadays because, like, you know. I'm a new F1 fan. Sorry, I'm a I'm a F1 guy. You're a F1 yeah. I but understand for a year now. You yeah, know? it's a very good sport. <laughs> mm -hmm. But most people don't even know that he had like a whole like signature Nike sneaker. Mm -hmm. You know, but who's but, your who's your F1 team? Uh, I don't have a team to be honest. You got a you got a driver. But um, Michael Schumacher, I put him at the same level as Michael Jordan. Okay. In the Formula One. So mm -hmm. when I was young, I was fan of Alain Prost. Yeah. But I was when Schumacher arrived, I was like. Because Schumacher was doing stuff that nobody will do. Mm -hmm. Take a lot of risk. Crazy driver. And uh, he was, at the beginning, driving a Ferrari, which the Ferrari was, no disrespect to Ferrari, but most of the cars always broke. Break, mm -hmm. but that <laughs> they got that was, problem this year, too. <laughs> yeah. And that car was, like, not working very well. But Schumi was like, I'm going to do my race and do the best I can to yeah. win. Like, kind of Jordan. Jordan will have... Or Pippen. Pippen yeah. had his back hurt in yeah. the final. No matter and what. just keep going. <laughs> yeah. So, this is the reason why I love Shumi. And in the pit of Formula 1, you will not see anybody cool except these jackets and everything. Yeah. And you see Michael Schumacher wearing Nikes. For a kid like me, I would be like, oh, I want that shoes. Did you ever get any of them? No. No. I mean, I bought one on aftermarket on eBay Vintage, just a few yeah. years ago. Or, but or even a few years ago, they had like that... Uh, the Zoom Turf shoe that was yeah. his that got like re-released, but it wasn't like an official like PE shoe or anything exactly. like that. Exactly. So we will get inspired by that shoes. Yeah. And but Michael Schumacher wearing them, so he will make us want more Nikes. So th what I'm saying about the circle of how much he can touch a kid like me, from Michael Jordan to Michael Schumacher, mm -hmm. but because of the relationship of what we see, what we want to feel like, we want to have the shoes. If that shoes didn't have the swoosh and it would be another brand, I would probably feel the same way. Mm -hmm. But because of the sh swoosh is so good and it means yeah. so much and the Olympics and the Carl Lewis and all this stuff back we had back then, uh, you want that more. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of sometimes sad that I don't have this today. What, the, the Schumacher shoes? Or, or, sh or something like this. An equivalent of that that yeah, still inspires touch me you and in I'm the like, same way. Or touch some kids. Because today the market... One more time, I understand that, yeah. but I'm not from that culture. The market of collaboration and selling the most possible and the shoes doesn't make any sense. It doesn't look like anything that actually you want to wear. I don't approve that. Yeah. Mm. Finding a young artist who express himself in the shoes and the shoes mean something more like, like more than just uh, two names together. Yeah. This is what I'm about. Are there some projects like that that you've really enjoyed? I mean, I think Virgil is one that's obvious and stands out to all of us, but are there other sneaker projects like that that you can think of from the past couple of years where you felt like they really went beyond just two names together? So, Broken Arm Salomon. Yeah. Every time he's a storyteller. Yeah. And every time I'm like, they explain me why, but I even don't know because when I see the shoes, I quickly got it and I really want them. Yeah. Um, Tom Sachs, Nike. Of course. Yep. Um... Cactus Flea Market, Nike. Yeah. I like them. N not all of them, but most of them, they're really nice. Mm -hmm. Especially the one coming. They're special. You yeah. like that shoe? I, I can't wait to see them in real. And You don't have a pair yet? Because there yet. was like a rumor that that shoe had gotten canceled or something like that. But yeah. I don't know. I will do my best to have them. But uh, even if I maybe 
I think they're gonna be good on my feet. So mm. I really would love because I like her brand too. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the Nocta. You like that? I like the Noctas. Yeah. The the, the white one and the black one. Really? Yeah. I can't do the white one. I like them because for many reasons. Um, if you look on the side, it has the shoes has some some lines related to some cars. Really? Yeah. And um, but they look tuggish. And they have the good leather mm -hmm. and the Air Maxes. Mm -hmm. So they have everything to make me happy. <laughs> good enough. Right. And, I, and I like the brand Nocta. Okay. I really like that brand. I think what they're doing, it's it's very different and it's very special. And I feel the connection with Drake. So I like the brand for that reason. Yeah. Um, but it's... Uh, which shoes actually was in my mind? And I was like, that's the shoes that I like a lot. Uh, I saw, I don't have the name of that company, but I saw like two weeks ago, a pair of green New Balances with, in the front, it, I think there oh, are resellers in London. A tongue? The, the flip oh, no, no, oh, the, are you talking about the basement ones? I think it's that. Um, basement there, 2002 a, R, maybe, let me look it up. It's a reseller company in yeah. London who yeah, did yeah, a collab yeah. with uh, New Balance. Yeah. I love that shoes. That shoes is beautiful. It's uh, like all green and black? Yeah. Yep, that's yeah. a beautiful Base, sneaker. Yeah, basement. Yeah. And there's like a brown so and our black one in the as well. Too. Yeah, that sneaker is beautiful. Uh, obviously, I love the Air Force One Louis Vuitton. Yeah, not because he's my friend. Do you have the retail pairs too? The what? The the regular. We talked earlier about the friends and family. Yeah, one. I have the ones that just came out too. Which colorways? White ones, the gold one. These are releasing tomorrow. They said there's only 1,200 pairs for all of the U.S. and Canada. How am I going to get a pair, Arthur? I don't know. Because <laughs> even me, I was like. No. I don't want to talk too much about it because I'm kind <laughs> yeah. of upset. But yeah, yeah. I was which, like, which is your favorite out of all of the Louis Vuitton Air Force ones that you've seen? Favorite one is the one is not made. And what? I've uh, I got the chance to see all of them when Virgil was working on it with his team, and one of them we made it kind of together as a fun, and but he did some crazy stuff. So they. We, it's coming from me. It's different because I have feelings with all this mm -hmm. because of the guy. But mm -hmm. I remember Virgil was in my house during Corona. He was in Paris, and he, we were bored because we couldn't go out. Yeah, sure. I have a funny story though mm -hmm. on the way to make that shoes. Um, and it was 10 p.m. and we couldn't go out of our house after 8 p.m. But literally, me, I was driving no matter what. Mm -hmm. So we eat because restaurants were closed. So we eat at my house that mm -hmm. night. We eat and V was like, let's go work on the Air Force mm. in his office. W Virgil was like a real work addict. He would be yeah. in his office alone working till whatever time. The guy d even didn't know about jet lag. He would be there, that's it. Yeah. Landed from Chicago, work. Sure. Okay. Wow. So I drive from my house to his office. We get pulled over by the cops, of course, because mm -hmm. they saw the blue G-Wagon mm. like, from far, only one car. Mm -hmm. And they come and the cops go, what you doing? I said, we're going to work. Believe it or not, we're going to work. And he was like, what's your work? But the cop recognized the guy on the right. Virgil. But he didn't recognize Virgil. He said, you are the designer of Christian Dior in French. Okay. Virgil doesn't have any ego. Yeah. And Virgil is such a nice guy and very smart. He understands French. So he French. mistook him for he, the brand, wrong brand. Wrong brand. Mm -hmm. He Got said, it. you are the designer in French. Vous êtes le designer de Christian Dior. He said that in French to V. V, v said in French, yes, oui. oui. <laughs> Instead of saying, no, I'm the Louis Vuitton. <laughs> no ego. Wow. But also Virgil respects everybody too. Yeah. So it's a lot of good stuff. He look at the cop, he's like, yeah, we oui, say moi. Mm. The cop goes, ah, oh, okay, you can go. Wow. Well, it also got you out of the, the whole police situation <laughs> yeah. too. Wow. So it doesn't matter at that point. And I was like, I was like, it's like, because usually when we get pulled over, I always find a way to, mm -hmm. but he saved me that day. Yeah. We went to the office and he worked on his air forces. Yeah. And he had many IDs. A lot of the IDs was related to a lot of inspiring people from the New York streets back then, like Fat Joe, sure. the Terror Squad, Air wow. Forces, one of my favorite two yeah. with the TS on the side, mm -hmm. orange or pink ones. We had all these on the computer and all these on the on the board. And V was like getting inspired by, of course, DAZ, Dr. Dre, mm -hmm. uh, the storytellers all behind, but also by the fake Air Forces. Yeah. Yeah. So many fake Air Forces exist with fake LV logos. Of course. So Virgil, you know how much he's, he's open, he's capable to do everything that yeah. even if it looks mm -hmm. like a fake, he doesn't care, yeah. that's him. 
So a lot of shoes were happening on his brand and on his design and on samples because he had all the soles of the Air Forces in pink, green, brown. He had all of those. So he would put on the top his IDs and they would look great. But then that's not only his power, the LV people has to also shoes and yeah, Nike sure. too, of course. So the shoes who come out, I like them, but they are not my favorites. I like them because of the story. Yeah. What was the color of the one that you liked that never it came out? It wasn't the color, it was it was color way, but it was fur. Oh, I've, it was, was it in the display of the 47 that they, that I didn't they showed wait, recently? So I didn't know. I think I've seen it. It's, a, a it's just covered in pink fur, right? It, many different colors. It's like pink and blue, and it looks like yeah, cotton candy almost. There were two of them, but I, they, that one has only one feet. Okay. No two feet. I'm trying to find a and photo. And that of one, it. it's I, yeah. related to us. Uh, uh, we talk about flowers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how you put a big flower in a pot and it comes out. So mm -hmm. that was related to the shoes with a fur. Because he wanted to push like deeply hard and yeah. far away with everything. And I was like, as a fan of Air Force, I was telling him how I see stuff too. And the power V will take the info and turn it to ease and go crazy. So my shoes are the ones that they never came out. I'm trying to, they like, will, what's your favorite? They will, I think, never. Yeah, so. I, I wish I had the photo. Do you have any more shoes coming out? Me? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying. <laughs> Anything with Nike or what? Uh, no. no, 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 nothing with Nike. Fair enough. You mentioned, by the way, it was it was even hard for you to get the LV Air Force ones. Yeah. Yeah. But you got them. I didn't get all. I don't want all of them. Uh, I got the ones I want, which I'm happy. You're going to be on the website with me tomorrow morning trying to buy a no. pair? <laughs> I'm not trying to buy a pair. Will, you, will you try and buy a pair for me? Uh, if I can help you, I will help you with pleasure. <laughs> but um, to, for Virgil's defense on this, Virgil also wanted to everybody. Oh, he's here. Yep. Uh, that's a n nice one. Mm. Virgil also wanted to have, oh, Travis with the laugh. Um, Is Virgil, that your? No, no, that's okay. his car. Okay. No, no, no. Um, Virgil wanted to. He's the kind of guy who wants everybody to have mm -hmm. the chance to, because he put himself in a situation. He never put himself in a situation of being better than somebody else. Mm -hmm. He will go and buy his stuff too. He's mm -hmm. like, if when I wanted to buy that Supreme logo box, I went to the store, they didn't add it. If they had it, I would buy it. I want that kid to be able to buy it too, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's that's V. He he thinks like that. He thinks like this. So. The LV Air Forces was like literally, please just make the everybody to have it. Yeah. And there was a, vi actually speaking of Travis and Virgil, there was a video I think I saw online where you were at a concert. I think it was a Travis show with Virgil and you had like done uh, t-shirts that were like La Arte de la Automobile yeah. and Travis Scott. Yeah. And Travis was like throwing them out to yeah. the, the crowd. What was yeah. like? So... Travis is somebody that I met when he was uh, younger and before he get really big. Mm -hmm. Like Virgin, the trail type era? Exactly. Yeah. Virgin and I, we always say Travis is the next mm -hmm. on, on, on the game because Travis has some type of energy and he's, 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 a, he's a genius. He's a talent. So, but we always get a good connection. He will come to Paris. We will uh, drive together. We have many stories on cars together. And one day, Travis did a live Instagram. It was early in the morning for me. And I clicked on the live, and Travis was, I don't know, he was doing something on the studio with his only friends, and he saw my name popping, and he said, I drive better than you. Let's do a race. And I said, let's do a race. And I FaceTimed him, I said, let's yeah. do a race. And he said, I'm coming to Paris, let's do a race. And I was like, I'm serious, let's do a race. So the T-shirt, was literally we never wanted to sell the t-shirt i was like i'm gonna do a t-shirt with it i'm gonna put my gt3 and your event editor um with uh, the eiffel tower and we did that with adrian and we said we're gonna do a race and give the t-shirts to the friends around mm. but travis missed his flight oh. so he came he landed the day of the show so i went with the t-shirts we didn't have many on the show and i said are you okay to throw it and travis just throw it so did you guys ever get to do the race? Never. Wow. You but v, v was on fire for it. So V was there also throwing up the t-shirt and yeah. giving it to Travis because we we're excited, you know, yeah, just yeah. For, for, for just to share some stuff. You felt confident about the race though? Against Travis? Yeah. I think he will win. You really? think he would win? Yeah, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the cars and like people driving the cars, 
recently Cuddy and Nigo the video? Yeah. One of your cars? Uh, one of my friend car. Okay, so yeah. ha when music videos happen and like they want to use cars that you have access to, what like are some cool memories that stick out or one story that sticks out where you're like, this is pretty awesome that, you know, this person is in a car that I sourced or something like that? Pop Smoke. Mm -hmm. Remember that? that. that thing Steven and Pop, right? Never forget that day. Mm. That day was insane. Another story with Virgil. In Paris, right? Yeah. Yeah. Was that uh, the Quavo video? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. what what was... Because I'm a huge fan of Pop Smoke. I mm -hmm. found Pop Smoke on Instagram. He had like 60,000 followers. Mm -hmm. That video of him and his gang in the kitchen with the blue butter in the back, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, probably reposted that, that video, probably no lie, 20 times. Because wow. I was like, wow, this guy, the way he rap and everything. So... Um, I'm a friend of Steven, and uh, Steven told me that he's coming to Paris to shoot a video with uh, Virgil. Mm -hmm. And Virgil was um, was kind of art directing with his team because mm -hmm. uh, the people who film are very also good, good, good filmmaker. Um, and um, Pop Smoke, in the, I heard the song because the song wasn't out. Pop yeah. Smoke in the song says Steven Victor in the pista. Yes. So and yes. I had the pista. That was my car. And um, and I don't, I don't give a lot of cars to a lot of video. I don't, I don't care. I don't do that. I just has to, I have to be related somehow. But that I feel the connection because pista, you need to know what is a pista. Mm -hmm. the, the car just came out, and apparently Steven was driving a pista in New York, and Pop experienced it with him. Mm. So I said, yeah, I have a pista. I give them the pista, and so Virgil team was filming. My assistant was on the set. And I told them with the pista, the cops in Paris, don't go, f go to that place which is near my office. So they went there to film, and my assistant called me. He said, "I think you should come because you will not like the way things look with the car. Because I don't want to have a lot related to a lot of things who I don't agree on." Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was with V at the restaurant. And I was like, my 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 guy told me like we should go, and I'm like I. Your team is doing a good job, but I think we should go check. Mm -hmm. You were worried and about so, the car? No, I was not worried about how the car. I was worried about how it looked. Because mm -hmm. Steven Victor in the pista, Steven needs to be in the pista. Yes. Yeah. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So he sent me a picture of Quavo and Pops wanting in pista. But I was like, where is fucking Steven? <laughs> the lyric, yeah. Like, we yeah. need Steven in the pista. And yeah. the pista needs to go crazy, too. Sure. Yeah. So... Um, so we went, we arrived, and they were in the restaurant dancing. So all the scene in the restaurant dancing, this is freestyle. Mm. Mm. Nothing is programmed. The people in the back dancing, they were having a birthday. They even just don't know who people. is who. They yeah. were just dancing, and they were celebrating with Pop Smoke and Quavo, and Pop Smoke and Quavo being very nice. They yeah. went dance. Pop Smoke, I don't know the guy well, but he was at the set, was like very smile, mm -hmm. very nice. So people were connected. So then... I was like, let's go back and do the video with the car. They were like, you sure? I was like, yeah, let's go. So we went and Quavo and Pop were singing in the front of the car. And I was like, I'm going to sit inside. Steven, come with me. And and I look at V and I said, look, it's V. I said, V knows I can go crazy. I said, bro, look this. And he was like, okay. So he knew. <laughs> and V said to Tim, focus on Arthur. I know he's going to go crazy. <laughs> so Steven sit next to me and I went to Pop and Quavo. I said, if I come closer... Don't get scared. Okay. It's, I'm doing it on purpose. So I start to just... Donuts, right? Donuts, yeah. donuts. And I get cl very close because somehow I get very close to Quavo. So that's the picture of Quavo like this because mm -hmm. I, I was about to touch him. But Pop, <laughs> but Pop, literally Pop is the, the guy of his lyrics. No mm -hmm. scare. He's yeah. there standing, mm -hmm. having fun, watching Quavo, laughing, <laughs> yeah. looking at me, be like, this guy crazy, but yeah. it's fine. Yeah. Like, I seem crazier. And we were just doing it naturally. Yeah. And I, I was wishing to the cop came, because we would need that in the video, mm. but that and did not happen. Him, That's the guy from Dior, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> right? <Yeah>. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but the cop didn't came, but uh, I had to change the tires after that. But it was nice, it was real, yeah. it was like authentic, it was fun. And we, we did it. It's amazing. Amazing. Uh, and then, you know, I feel like we could go on for so long, but what, besides like the brand and, and what, what do you have coming up next that you're excited about? Anything that you could share? My collection yeah. related to the anniversary of my brand, the five, the, uh, this year is the 10 years of the company okay. and five years of the brand. 
and I'm very excited to to release that with uh, my team. When does that come out? Uh, hopefully, if everything goes all right, because today the factories are doing tough, everything right? happen. It's very tough. Uh, September, or October, and I did a um, kind of a track suit, a little bit puffer jacket and pants with a company in Italy called Crazy Thousand, Crazy okay. Ten, which is very good quality, and I. I I would wear that every day. I can't wait to wear that. I think it's the first time of my life that I'm excited to be in the winter because I want to wear that. Mm. Um, this is the kind of thing that kind of thing that excite me. Collaboration-wise, it's uh, nothing that I can say yet, mm -hmm. but it's exciting stuff. And uh, but I'm mainly focused on my thing. So amazing! <laughs> I love this shoe. Yeah, you love this colorway, black and purple and pink Thank for you. me, but. Congratulations. Thank you. You know, you, you said that you're celebrating the anniversary this year, but you know, just in the recent weeks, I feel like people really love these sneakers. So thank you. It means uh, th a lot for me or you guys liking it. Yeah. And thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, hopefully come back. It'll be a pleasure. I feel like we just Bring like- Bring a I will if you want. And I will make that <laughs> Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, by we'll then- shoot the next episode by, of Yeah, by then you better practice, yeah, practice your driving, but- <laughs> I'll have the I'll have the gold medal from the go kart races Please. by then. <laughs> Arthur, thank you so much for taking Thanks the time. To you. Appreciate Thanks it, man. This has been the Complex Sneakers Podcast. We hope everyone has a great weekend. Please like, subscribe. We will see you next week.